Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for Scatfest's B-side, Grail Front. Could I have worded that better? Yes. Will I? Absolutely not. It's an alternate game mode that we get instead of the usual exhibition quests. A Grail Front gives Grail fragments. By completing all the maps, you can get enough to fuse into a full Grail. Good deal. The core idea is that you've taken the field against another master and need to defeat them by either destroying all their servants or attacking their life points directly three times. You do this on a map consisting of a network of nodes. You're given a designated number of summoning spots that are restricted to specific classes. On top of this, you've got to contend with party cost. The allowances on this end are low, so don't expect to run a full team of high rarity attackers with good CEs. To initiate battles in Grailfront, you need to run one servant up to another and attack them. This pulls you into FGO's standard gameplay. There are some big differences though. Unless a servant is adjacent to one of their allies, battles in Grailfront are solo and a single turn by default. The attacker does their turn, the defender does theirs, and then you get kicked back to the strategy map. This also means you'll get Brave Chains regularly. I'd recommend taking servants that can exploit this, whether with Buster Brave Chains, the extra card of pen skill, or stacking on-hit effects. In other words, self-sufficient soloists have an advantage over support-dependent system attackers. If they don't absolutely need the CE to do their jobs, all the better. For instance, Kualtar, Ashwataman, and especially Canis are extremely powerful in this mode, and if you have them skilled up, I'd recommend them as anchors for your team on maps that allow their class. Another feature of Grailfront is that all servants have break bars, including yours. Normally a single bar, but you'll see enemies with multiple sometimes. When a bar breaks, they'll retreat from the encounter. If your NP does this, the game checks to see if the enemy is popped, and your servant won't keep attacking after. However, this also means that if you break an enemy's bar before they do anything, they lose their counterattack. Uh, that said, your servant is kind of stuck in front of them anyway, so the enemy will just get a first attack on their next turn. This situation makes it hard for standard Berserkers to operate. Like, you'd expect Penthesilia to be good in a mode where you can bust your Brave Chin every turn, but without protection, she just dies on the enemy's turn. Instead, you can bait enemies in with your low-value servants or even your master. Or if you're running a more robust brawler, you can just rush in, attack while popping your protection effects, and break their bar. On the enemy's turn, they'll initiate combat. You can shake it off and potentially finish them off, saving you the trouble of doing it with your stamina. I believe it's listed as moves on global, but that's a bit misleading. Different actions use different amounts of stamina. Team building in Grailfront is pretty interesting. Usually I go for a single anchor servant with a strong CE, a secondary attacker that can fight without one, and a bunch of cannon fodder to block enemy access to your master. Now if you're the sort that likes to grail low rarities, you can get an edge in deployment. However, the rarity damage bonus from the farming portion of Scatfest doesn't apply here, so if they underperform, that's probably why. Mash is surprisingly good, so if you have an extra slot available and you don't need it for a high-end attacker, definitely slot her in. She costs zero, so at worst, you can use her to screen for yourself or a diversion. She's very good at not dying, and sometimes enemies will burn their action points just throwing themselves at her over and over, meaning your real killers can get access to the enemy master. Really, the AI in this first grill front isn't all too bright, and you can make it do some funny things. Here, you can see Munir fleeing Gudako and running straight into Eric Bloodaxe, and here's footage of him running out of his fortress to get pincered by Kentoki and Suzuka. As long as you have more health, having Gudako punch the enemy master to death is completely viable, and in situations where each of you has only one servant left, you can just move around to try and probe a response. Uh, more often than not, Munir will do something insane that you can punish. The most consistently exploitable thing I've seen is that if you chase him with a servant and hit him, he'll immediately swap positions with one of his servants. But if you have another servant or Gudika waiting on the other side, he just served himself up on a platter. Now I've got some miscellaneous tips and trivia to round this out, so get your notepads handy. For the purposes of Craft Essence effects, each Grailfront map is treated as one continuous battle, so unfortunately things like Volume in her Dredger Rum won't refresh every time you enter combat. That chases off the table. Cooldowns get reduced as you move around the map, but buffs should stay active if they were still on you at the end of an encounter. This favors persistent effects like hit-based evasion, but it is possible to keep single-turn protection between fights. You just have to be very careful about when you activate it. In my recollection, battles where you can move second are where you can do this, since the fight ends before your enemy takes another turn. But I'm not 100% on that, so just be aware it might not work the way you'd expect. Your Mystic Coat does matter, and I'd recommend something like the original uniform or the Atlas uniform for their strong protection effects. Uh, let's see... If there are multiple servants on either side, combat will extend past the first turn. I personally find this more of a nuisance, since I lose the benefits of reliable Brave Chains, but if you're trying to run supports, your best bet is to surround your target with relevant servants. Once you assemble this sort of pincer, attacking will pull them into combat as well, letting you buff up. My personal recommendation is that you usually don't want servants adjacent to each other unless your main attacker is exposed and in danger. 
If you have a conga line with Mash and Jerker, for instance, an enemy attacking Mash will pull Jerker into that encounter, exposing her to attacks and potentially giving the enemy a free break. Finally, some stages have effect bubbles on the field. The floating ones in this first Grail front give their effects to whoever enters the tile first, meaning you should grab whatever you can without getting baited into an enemy's attack range. There, that should give you a pretty good primer for Grail front. The cost of failure is relatively low, unless you're on the clock for farming the lotto, so by all means experiment with your favorites to see what works. Worst comes to worst, you can try to win by maneuvering. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on Twitch where I'll be farming the lotto and chilling this weekend. Twitch.tv slash Tyson. I stream every weekend, Friday through Sunday at 3pm. See you there.